No doubt if you'd been to the mall in the late 90s, early 2000s, you saw one of these being sold at a kiosk in the middle of the mall. I remember seeing these all the time and recently I brought that up in a video of mine and I was like, you know what? I, 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 gotta, I gotta be about it. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Let me go find one of these and test it out, unbox it in the video and whatnot. And as I searched this thing out, I uncovered a lot of interesting things that went on with this. So there's a little bit of a history that I find pretty intriguing, but what do we call this thing? This packaging is confusing as all hell. The original new edition power player super joystick Super Joy 3, Super Joystick TV game power player. What do we call this thing? This thing was widely known as the Super Joy 3 or the power player. And this is one of the more infamous packagings, I guess, for the device with Phantom Menace, Star Wars action going on in the background. Very deceiving packaging to say the least. The back here, you know, it shows you what you get. You get the Nintendo 64 style controller, which is actually the console and you know, you can use the buttons to, to play the game. Then you get a Genesis style six button controller as player two, and then a light gun. And then some pictures of some very misleading stuff. Like are these games packaged on this thing? I don't think so. This is crazy. So the, the biggest misleading thing is that gold sticker. And I vividly remember seeing that whenever I came across these in the mall. And I'm like, how the hell could they possibly have 76,000 games on this thing. That is outrageous. Well, it turns out there's not really 76,000 games on here. It's going to repeat 76,000 times, but minus three of those zeros, there's about 76 games on here. And then there's going to be multiples where they're edited or maybe the game starts in a different level, that type of thing. So this is a Famiclone, an NES clone system, and it was very controversial for its time as it was out sometime in the late 90s and it lasted up through about 2004, 2005. The reason it lasted up until then is because Nintendo got wind of this thing and they were like, oh hell no, we're going after these people. So there was an individual, take a look at this. <laughs> there was an individual, Yonatan or Yonatan Cohen, I'm not exactly sure how to say his name. Um, but he was like the biggest part of this at that time, selling these via kiosks and malls, the Mall of America and whatnot, um, had storage facilities stocking these things up, working with the, uh, you know, the, the Chinese, you know, importer, exporter thing, all that kind of craziness, getting these things in America, buying them for like five to $8 a bundle and then reselling them for 40 to $80. It was nuts. So yeah, Nintendo got wind and the FBI wound up you know, serving a little search warrant on this guy, his kiosks, his storage facilities, all that crazy stuff. And this little advertisement does say it's an advertisement. This dude had to pay for this to be run in magazines. As it says down here, this ad was paid by, paid for by Jonathan Cohen as part of his restitution to warn others about the dangers and penalties associated with violating the copyright laws. Piracy is a crime. Violate the copyright laws, go to prison, pay huge financial penalties. He got five years in jail and then was supposed to be deported to uh, Israel once he finished serving his sentence. I don't know whatever happened with him after that. I would assume he went back to Israel because this was back in, in 2005, 2006 uh, when he started serving that. So pretty crazy stuff, man. Like this obviously didn't do much. If this was meant to warn others about the dangers of doing this kind of stuff, I still see to this day in the mall, people selling like the mini NES clone consoles. Like they don't care. But this, this was big enough to get on Nintendo's, uh, you know, hit list and they went after the guy. So we're going to go ahead and open this thing up and test it out. Cause yeah, this, this has to be a uh, amazing to say the least. I, I don't think so, but it might be. So this was new, actually never used. Um, I opened it once when I got it a few weeks ago just to make sure everything was in there. And yeah, it's in there. Very crazy packaging, the styrofoam that drives me nuts. We got our power cable, AC adapter. And then here, here's our console. So this is the console and the controller. It's got a little heft to it. And it does have this little, um, this little box right here, sometimes people come across these things and they're like, what, what is this? What was this for? It, it, it's a battery pack. 
That way you didn't have to, um, didn't have to plug this in. You could put in four, I think four, yeah, four double A's. You could put in four double A's so you didn't have to be hardwired in to, to power. But yeah, sometimes people come across these things and they wonder what the hell they are. And that's what it was. Just so you could run this thing without having to be plugged in. You see that pin, that, that little cartridge uh, socket there? That's for Famicom cartridges. This is a system on a chip. It's not emulation, it's actual system on a chip, a clone console. Is it any good? No, it's not, but, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, you know, oh, I couldn't get a retro USB AVS, uh, I couldn't get uh, NT Mini Noir, let me go get the Super Joy 3. No, you, you probably don't wanna do that. Like, this thing is not great. You'll see in a moment. But there's that very stiff, the, the analog stick doesn't do anything, it's just for aesthetics, kind of funny. Like, I don't know, if you mess with that enough, you might bust it off, but yeah, it's just there for nothing. But there you go, reset, start, select, A, B, A, B, and then D-pad. Up here, second player, port, or for the gun, on, off switch. It clicks to on and off, it just kinda feels mushy, scooting it over. Audio, video, DCN. So there's that, there's that. Now this thing, all right, let's get that out. Here's the AV cables. This little gun, if you're playing this on a CRT, it actually works. You could play Duck Hunt or whatever other light gun games they possibly have on here, uh, and it works. It works just fine. I mean, it's a decent little crappy light gun, and it, it, it works. I mean, to say the least, it works. You look in the... Uh, the, the plastic there, there's like, I don't know. It's like, there's like white paint all over. I don't know if you can even see in there. It's like all scuffed and got paint all over it, but I tested this for a short while and it worked. And uh, yeah, we're good with that. Then here's this thing. Oh, we got, we got some controls and or, uh, instructions, my bad. Instructions explaining the battery thing. Um, okay, not much to do with that. And then what is this? A little cutout. A love letter, possibly? Play it on the following channels, okay. Does not need batteries unless playing on a car TV. Sure, why not? Oh, and we do have, if I could get it out, this little, this little nub, this little thing, it screws into here. So you could use it this way instead of this way. It's like recessed in there and it feels really bad. But that's player two controller and this controller's ass. But let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and uh, check out some games real quick. And so he here we go. I mean, this is a very bad use of the RetroTINK 5X Pro, but you know what? It's the only way I can get this thing displayed. Now this controller, you look, look at this thing with all the cables popping out of it. This thing is extremely uncomfortable to hold because you have to hold it this way, right? But like, then your fingers are scraping on this thing. It's stupid, man. But you know what? It is what it is. It's what we have to use. If you want to use this, this is for player two only. You can't just use this as the console, plug this in and use this. And in all honesty, this is worse than the controls that are built in on this. So ah, you got to make do with what you got, right? So yes, there's 76,000 games on here but they just repeat each game. Like there's a thousand versions of every freaking game. Like you can go in here, let's see, 1942. Let's go ahead and check that out. Like this game's gonna be on here a bunch of times. And you see like there's missing letters. Like they did that to save space, apparently. Very weird. And this control, like D-pad is like, it's, it's going all over the place. I'm like pressing right and it's like pulling left after a couple seconds. Oh my God, this, this rigs quality. So you wanna go back, hit reset. Fun time, bitches. Okay, uh, let's check out Aladdin 3. Oh wait, what the hell just happened? Oh wow, this game just like, it just jumps right into the game. As Soon as you select it, you're in it to win it. We got Tekken. Yep, this is Tekken. Mm -hmm. 
wow, the audio is horrible. I died by the first Goomba, but you know what? It's not my fault. It's the control's fault. Everything is sounding off. The colors look okay, but the sound. Whenever they, like, even to this day, these, like, cheap clone consoles, sometimes they get the color okay, but the sound is always, always bad. And you could tell, like, a game that you're super familiar with, like Super Mario Brothers, uh, yeah. And the audio is, like, coming through really low. Ninja One, is that Ninja Gaiden? Let's find out. No. The buttons are so goddamn stiff on this thing. Like, even if I knew what I was doing, like... As you see, like, Galaza, which is Galaga, they've had that listed multiple times. Um, Mario Bros. UEV, what is this? I'm pretty sure we've already played this. Yeah, and it's, it's just the same games. Like, how could they get away with this? Nintendo got them. 1942, Macross I've seen like a bunch of times so far. Star Force, Mario Bros. It's just like, what is this garbage, man? All right, Contra. Really interesting to say the least to check this thing out, you know, 15, 16, 20 years after it was uh, kind of more well known. I've heard people say that they uh, collect these things as there are a lot of different variants, but I, I mean, they're crap, they're garbage. There's many better options available nowadays. Even if you want a clone console, um, I think I only paid like 20 bucks to get this from somebody. They're not like worth money, you know what I mean? So yeah, if you want something quirky and weird in your collection, yeah, grab one of these. Uh, if you actually want to play NES games, probably not. This thing is boo-boo the fool to the max. Appreciate you guys watching. Big ass blurry thumb butt like a Bigfoot. 